Hi everybody, this is Jeff Watts and this is episode 93 of the Agile Pubcast. Remote, obviously, because we're still in lockdown. And oh, how long have we been in lockdown? We can't remember. We genuinely don't know anymore. And Paul and I got talking about how our energy levels seem a lot lower than normal. And not just us, but other people, the work colleagues that we've been coming into contact with, our clients, friends, seem to be tailing off a bit. That sense of novelties worn off, things maybe have become a little bit monotonous. And that got us talking about, well, how do we handle monotony? at the office, in, in work, in an agile team, for example, things can become a little bit repetitive. How do you keep things fresh? How do you keep the energy levels high? And that got us talking about, well, what are we in control of? Let's focus on what we can control, because quite often it's a lot more than we think at first thought. Now, somehow that morphed into a conversation about creating a sense of safety for online meetings and how that might be different to meetings in the office in person, which was quite interesting. And then finally, we got talking about the weirdest places that we've had meetings. And that got us thinking about challenging you guys to think, well, where have you been that's really weird when you've joined one of your team's meetings or a non-team meeting? That could be that the team meeting itself was in a weird place or just you were in a weird place when you joined it. We'd love to hear it. Keep us entertained. Tweet us at the Agile Pubcast. And one final request from me is please check out our Patreon page. P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash The Agile Pubcast and show your support for us with a small monthly donation. That would be fantastic. Makes it easier to uh, to turn down these advertisers who are constantly trying to push sponsorship into the, uh, into the airwaves. But anyway, enough of me. Cheers to everybody who's listening. Hang in there. Things will get better and we'll still be here as long as you keep listening. Cheers, everyone. <laughs> hello jeff hello paul happy monday to you yes yes same to happy you lock, happy lockdown monday it seems like i'm i mean almost now I'm, I'm drinking the same thing I, I think i've already drunk this at some point during lockdown and i've i've kind of lost the appetite all my lockdowns the mystery sizes have gone and i'm now going to just go back to trying to remember something different but i think i've had this before thatcher's rose yeah what do you need rose a, i think there's a there's a there's a, a an accent on the e rose mm-hmm. so it'd be pink red yeah what do you need right to send you a box i thought you said you had someone send you a box didn't your mate yeah your box it's all gone i think really gee i had some free stuff i had, I had some free free stuff from my mate yeah it's all gone is it all gone. Crikey. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Is it champagne? Is it champagne? Is he's all right. <laughs> no. Uh, I'm drinking. Um, I'm, I'm alcohol free today. I'm winning. I'm winning. I'm drinking a winning, an award winning alcohol free beer. Uh, I'm guessing from the amount of German language on here that it is German. From the Insel Brauerei. And it's won four World's Best Beer Awards. Wow. It's a Swimmer's Saison, Seltonus Alcohol Fires Beer. And it's wrapped in paper, which is quite an interesting touch. You've had, you've had a, we had a, a, a paper wrapped beer at a pub in London. One of those days when we were actually yeah. face to face in London. Do you remember that? Yeah, that, that was our last work together, wasn't it? Is that what it was? That was, yes. Near St. Paul's. Yeah, I remember that. Oh, how long ago was that? It seems like years ago, mate. Nearly four months ago. Oh, my days. Oh, my days. Oh, that's an interesting flavour. It's almost, almost got a little bit of toffee in there, but... oh. Maybe maybe more caramel than toffee, but only not not that strong. But a bit of a bit of fruit, but not your citrus fruit. More 
Not berries. Maybe a bit of banana. Oh. But yeah, it's quite that's, that's, that's a good combination, toffee and banana. Mm. That's a strong combo. Good ice cream flavours there, toffee and banana. My favorite, One of my favourite desserts, banoffee pie. Oh, yes. Fine, fine, a fine dessert. Yes. My daughter made me a banoffee pie a couple of weeks ago, bless her. What have you been up to? You had a good weekend? Did I have a good weekend? Um, did I? Did it rain at the weekend? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we Oh, yeah. So it was Father's Day, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. And um, Father's Day was good. I had a Father's Day cooked breakfast yesterday, Sunday, which was nice. I had to make that myself, though. But uh, I still had a cooked breakfast. And then um, we went out for a cycle ride. And the, 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 the missus said, just a short, relaxing cycle ride. 20 kilometers later, we get home with a saddle sore bottom. Um, kids miserable, sin, because they, they, we, they had no, no strength left in their legs. Um, and then I cooked a roast lamb dinner. So, it was, yeah, that was that was Sunday. Happy, happy Father's Day to me. Well fed, well fed. Yeah. And I um, don't think we got up to much. We had a, a bit of a lazy day Saturday, but what about you? <clears throat> we had a trip to the Mall. Ooh. Um, yeah, during lockdown, my laptop and my wife's iPhone both broke. Okay. And Apple Care on the phone, bless them, did the best they could, but they said you've got to wait until the stores are open. Right. And yesterday was the first day that Apple stores were open. Well, yeah, no. I think. Well, oh, it wasn't that long ago anyway. And so- Is that your nearest Apple store then, Bristol? Yes. Is it? Yeah. There are two. There's one in Cabot Circus and one in Cribs Causeway. <clears throat> um, yeah, so we took a drive and it was quite bizarre because only about 20% of the shops in the mall were open. Wow. One-way system. Was it a bit of a zombie apocalypse film that no, no, nothing around, all there and it was empty? A little bit. A little bit, yeah. Surreal. Car park, very empty. Yeah, but it was. Yeah, very bizarre, but it was it was a bit of a change, you know, <laughs> something that wouldn't really have garnered at much of a mention, turned into like something different. an expedition. Yeah, and day out. Yeah, so we left the phone in the shop and then drove to Cabot Circus to get a slim chickens. <laughs> you drove all the way. That's 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 not a trivial distance either. That's that's it's about twenty five okay. minutes, isn't it? Yeah, hour round trip, I would have said, yeah. Just to get us them chickens. Yeah, but it's nice. It's in the car, classy. <laughs> Wowzers. But did you get your phone and your laptop fixed? That's the main thing. Didn't get my laptop fixed because I didn't think about that. I didn't, I, I, as when I said I didn't make, think about it, I, Take it with you. I didn't make the appointment. I didn't make an appointment. Uh, um, I, I just forgot. Okay. I, I still have a broken laptop. Oh dear. Hey ho. Not like I'm going anywhere, so No, true. Don't we really... need a laptop? I was um looking through my box there. It's a bit messy back there at the moment, but um my uh my course box, you know, I take it yeah. as a machine you've got a suitcase usually full of uh agile goodies and stationery and it's I rifle through it today and kind of nostalgically rummaged through all the things that I would normally be using on a weekly basis and now it's kind of gathering cobwebs in the fondly, corner. Fondly fingering the post-it notes. Yes, just brushing them with my fingers. <laughs> yes, it's a uh, sad times, it's a sad times. Not using, I mean, my Newlands, yeah. they're in their case, they've probably got cobwebs all over them, probably all dried up, my Newland pens. Mm. I should feel I should get them out and give them an airing or yeah, right. give them a... If you not, you haven't got a flip chart stand at home like I have. No, you? no, nothing like that. You should get one. <laughs> play a dictionary. Have me, uh, get my Newlands have a have a day out. But no, it's all um, all, all under lock under lock and key at the moment. I've noticed in my work, I think I've made a jump here 
for everybody else, I've made a jump, but for me, in my head, I haven't. <clears throat> because I think our our energy, we're we're feeling a little bit nostalgic and a little bit I think sad about things. We are uh, yeah. in, in the role of Corona, we're still maybe a little bit of a dip. Uh, yeah, you and I, and I've noticed that with with people that I've been working with remotely as well. The, the last week or two, I think the uh, the novelty's worn off it as well, and. The energy levels are low. I don't think people have been working at a sustainable pace at home. Yeah. No, I think that's <laughs> that's fair enough. And so, I, I, yeah, I think the uh, it's it's it started to change. The atmosphere started to change. Yeah, it's almost like so. There was this this bounce at the at the, at the start of this. I remember me and you talking on these podcasts, saying how you know how we were quite pleasantly surprised and how buoyant it is and how energized people are about there's a lot you can do online and there's a lot and a lot of people that we've spoke to have said it's it's like it's better it's better than being in person but that, that's, that's that's their own opinion but i think now i think you're certainly right i think the novelty has worn off i think fatigue is 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 very much set in people are working on calls a lot during the day even a lot of my friends and family that we were regularly zooming with in the evenings that's kind of run it feels like it's run its course and people are kind of saying oh, well yeah maybe we won't bother this week the quizzes have stopped all that kind of lockdown kind of um you know hunker down attitude is kind of it just just lost us a bit i think yeah we've left it behind and now monotony is set in it's not new anymore is it that that it's not a. It's not. It's not a new no. tool. Fun tool to play with. Yeah. And I think I know. <clears throat> well, you know me. I'm. I do. I do get bored, and I start. I. I, I do sometimes make change for changes' sake. I, I'll just change things up a bit, and when I don't really need to, and it, it has its downsides. Um. But I do. I do get bored, and I, and I see that with yeah. You know, teams. Teams get stale. Yeah. Uh, organizations get stale. Um, even even during a change, things can get stale, which sounds a bit weird because you are changing. But it, it's important to keep things fresh. You know, we've yeah. heard that for years. The, the one thing that we've most commonly associated that with is the retrospective because you can get into a bit of a habit there, but equally the daily, the daily stand-up where you know, you've, you've done a lot of work in, in helping keep people keep that fresh over the years. And <laughs> there's the, that balance of regularity without it becoming monotony. Mm. Um, and I think, yeah, we're, we're there, but what, and that's what I'm starting to wonder now, what, what variables do we have to play with that we can change um, without, you know, breaking rules and endangering people? Mm. Well, I think a lot of the, just so we went out for a cycle ride yesterday and just the sheer numbers of well we were quite shocked at the last time we went out for a cycle ride was probably about three or four weeks ago because uh, my daughter hurt her knee so we hadn't been for a while but we got back on the bikes yesterday and just the, the amount of traffic that was that was the thing that we noticed the difference this was a sunday afternoon yeah the amount of additional cars just because life obviously is obviously life isn't back to normal and as, as it was but people are just moving around a heck of a lot more than they, than they were before and, and they're doing they're going out and they're, they're, they're traveling whatever they're doing but um we kind of lulled us ourselves into a bit of a false sense of kind of road safety i suppose you'd say by hmm. letting our kids much we're being much more liberal about letting the kids cycle out, out and on the road on the road and not having to worry too much about cars coming around, but yeah, I think it's, I think people are just desperate to, to see some sense of normality. Um, but things are slowly changing. I think, I think things will slowly change. <clears throat> There's still that looming fear, isn't it? That, that we might have to, but imagine the, the trouble that the, 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 the resistance, the difficulty people are going to have if we have to regress, if we have to go back to a previous condition that we've since lost. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm struggling with at the moment. Yeah. 
from a mental point of view, from how I will cope with that and how other people will cope with that is having to reintroduce measures. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why it's to get a scary thought. Um, yeah. No, there's no point worrying about that right now. That's what I tell myself. Because if you worry about it now and it doesn't happen, you've wasted that energy and that worry. And if it does happen, that worrying ain't going to have done much good anyway. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you could prepare yourself for it. I don't know. But um, no, interesting thing that um, I picked up through some, some of the work that I've been doing in my coaching and with this working from home and, and how I notice that because I speak to the same people sort of every week, every couple of weeks, they'll be in a different room, mm -hmm. different place. Uh, some of them, some of them are in the same place all, every time. And it, it just sort of, uh, the patterns start, I started noticing it. So I was asking them about it and they said, well, you know, when I'm in this room, I have a bit of a different sort of feel. And it's not so much the room, the fact that it's different. Uh, and, this is almost like, you know, when I cross the threshold in, of this room, I'm now in work mode. Mm. And when I cross the threshold of that room, I'm in sort of the equivalent of the, the office kitchen, mm. yeah, where you'd have your informal conversations. And so if I want to go and have a little chat with somebody that's not particularly, you know, focused work, then, then I'll go into that room. And the acoustics aren't as good or whatever, but it doesn't matter because... Yeah, and and that I think is quite interesting. Um, if you've got the opportunity to do it, that's a variable that's within your control. The other thing that that's, that came up recently was so I, I, as you know, I've done I've done in the past quite a bit of walking coaching, um, and when you've got a good relationship with people, you you know them quite well. You you're quite open with one another. The, the non-verbal body language isn't quite as important as it mm -hmm. is. Um, and so we, we, we started talking, so do we need to be on Zoom? I mean, it's nice to see you. Yeah. But it, it does take more energy. Yeah. And there's no reason why we have to be here. So should we just stick our headphones on and just have a phone call and go for a walk? And again, that's another variable, I think, that, that we can play with, certainly in the nice weather. Mm -hmm. um, and that sense of making sure that you are, it's quite easy to think, well, there's nothing you can do. You know, yeah. you, everything's st stuck and, and you know, unmovable. But there is quite a lot that's still within our control, even in a relatively... It's an interesting one. Do you think people... I'm hugely generalizing, probably just because I wonder if I would, this, I'm probably talking about me. Um, would people be, or would I be self-conscious if I was talking, having a very open, honest com coaching conversation, talking in public on a hands-free stroke? You know what I mean? When I'm not talking to someone, in my mind, I draw attention to myself. I, I, to, well, because people think they, that you're talking to yourself. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't know. Wait. I do know what you mean. I just I think it's a lot more common now than it was ten years ago when you used to have those sort of Bluetooth ear sets, ear pieces, mm. and you know, people would think, oh, it was just for the salespeople or whatever. Um, and that that did look a bit weird then, but I think it's a lot more normal now. Um, mm. I don't think I, I I think people feel more self conscious than other people notice, if that makes sense. You overplay how much people notice. What, where I thought you were going with that was uh, sort of safety in terms yeah, of... Yeah, well, that's where I was leading. Yeah, maybe I was just trying to explain it differently, is that, like, when I'm having a conversation with you yeah. in the pub, I'm talking, my mouth is talking to you. Yeah. Right? Gen generally, not, not in every case, but generally, if we're having a conversation, my face tends to be pointed towards your face. Mm -hmm. Um, so my direction, my conversation, my, the, the volume of my voice is largely directed in your area. When you are alone in a walking, wherever you might be walking down the street or through a park or whatever it might be, you tend to be, I tend to feel like I'm broadcasting more yeah. rather than 
having a private conversation. And that's probably what I was alluding to around also around the safety. Is that what you meant by safety? Yeah. Yeah. In terms of can people overhear and, uh, and that's, that's, that's an important thing, especially from a coaching perspective, when you have sort of confidentiality and things. Um, and it's something that I thought a lot about. And that's, that's one of the reasons why I, I'm more comfortable moving than I am sitting still. So if, for example, I was sat in my back garden and just sat there having a coaching conversation, then my neighbours could hear the whole of my side of the conversation. They wouldn't be able to hear the other side of the conversation, mm. but they could hear my side of the conversation. Um, no, it's, it's not a lot because uh, I listen more than I talk. But yeah. um, if I'm walking, then unless someone is keeping pace with me, they're only going to get a snippet yeah. as I walk past them. That's it. And, the, and it also reminds me of it's harder to unhear a conversation on a train, for instance, isn't it? So I, my thought was immediately drawn to Bob Mortimer. Yeah. Now that name that name won't mean a lot outside of a UK audience, I think. But Bob Mortimer is a is a UK comedian, a stroke um, present TV presenter, who um, has he's got a Twitter account. Have you seen his, his Twitter account? You, you familiar with what I'm talking about now? Um, I I have seen his Twitter account, but I don't know what you're going to say. Okay, so he does. Um, he's done a whole series of tweets. On, he does an impersonation of someone called Train Guy. Okay. Have you heard about Train Guy? No, I don't know. That. So it's 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 very funny, but it's it's obviously mimicking someone he's heard on a train at some point, mm -hmm. and the kind of you, those those types of conversations where they just you can't help but be interested in what they're talking about. Yeah, but he does it in a very funny kind of he drops in a load of fake names and things like that, like talking about sales and. Um, his friend called Col. It's just it's quite funny, but that's the type of thing that I think walking around maybe in the open, you are less likely to be trapped in hearing of yeah. hearing it. But I think if there was someone in, in in that room with you, or if there's someone in the same train carriage, if there's someone in the same doctor's waiting room, you're more acoustically more sensitive to what they're saying. Mm. If, for instance, if you're, if you're walking down a beach where there's perhaps a lot of wind noise or there's even more kind of the sound of the the sea there's less chance you're going to get overheard because there's more background noise to be to be lost yeah voices to be lost in i get that yeah I, I the whole facing you thing i get that but with with the good quality um without naming a brand the good quality acoustic equipment that we have audio equipment yeah. that we have it's um very good noise cancelling, direct, you know, it's, it's going probably closer my mouth to their ears over the phone than it is if we were in a pub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm conscious if we have conversations in a coffee shop, for example, um, how, how secure is that? But the something that popped into my mind, and I, it hadn't really occurred to me at all because it hadn't really been a thing. So I've been coaching up over Zoom for ages, but basically everybody else that I've been coaching has has predominantly been in an office environment. They've 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 rented a room in the office, or they were they were in their home. And now they're sort of all over the place, and. I know that there's nobody else in my room, but I don't know who else is listening in their room and they don't know who's in my room. Um, so I find that something I don't think really many people had really considered before. Had they? Had you? No. Um, with the, with remote working, especially. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, and it's especially, I suppose, it's, it's more important when you're potentially talking about sensitive subjects or sensitive information, whatever it might be. But, um, well, I know some companies don't even allow, or well, they're very fussed about the security, just the you know the digital security element of, of being overheard or tapped into 
through Zooms or whatever. I mean, it's not, I know it's not a, a, a flawless um, system, but just of what you can't see around the camera. Maybe, yeah, maybe that's something that needs to be more explicit, probably more with personal coaching as to, or remote personal coaching, I suppose, as to what your surroundings are. But isn't that, I mean, isn't that, if, if you're in the office inside a, you know, a meeting room, and most, uh, not most, but a lot of offices are kind of designed with natural light and glass in mind and, and try to make things as transparent as possible. But if you can see someone in the meeting room and you can see perhaps that in their diary what, what they're up to or what their, who their appointment is with, you know, you could argue that even that doesn't give you a sense of safety if you feel you're being watched, even if you can't really hear. There was rooms in Nokia that, um, where I used to work, that if we were seen in a room, I can't remember the name of the room, but there was a, a room that was almost exclusively dedicated to management, management layers because it was right by their desks. Right. And if you were seen in that room, regardless of what you were there to talk about, it was deemed as a serious, serious conversation. Okay. And if you were seen on your own in that room, it was deemed probably even more serious. So I do think that that might have even, man, that might have, you might, we might still be seeing that even if we were in the office, it's perhaps just less, you know, the, the, uh, the, the small window we have here doesn't, um, perhaps that, maybe that gives you more safety. I don't know. There's ways of managing it, right? So if I was, if I was having, um, a relatively sensitive conversation, then I would just put my headphones on uh, because then nobody outside, if I have the windows open, for example, because it's going to be really warm this week, then that's just an added layer of, of, of safety. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think there's this. There's, there's, so that gives that, that gives me the client safety that, that no one beyond you can hear what I'm saying. Yeah. I wonder though, for me, if maybe there's things, and this might happen that I don't want even the people in my own house to, to hear. True. Potentially. How do you manage that? Mm. Beyond, I suppose, beyond going outside and, yeah. Yeah, it's difficult. Because I'm, I'm not as lucky as you. I haven't, I know you've got a kind of a, a separate um, kind of your shed, your separate shed to the, to the house, which is, gives you a kind of a, that, that extra distance. But literally my, Oh, I'm lucky. I've got a, I've got a separate office I can use it, but it's it's you know the kids can run right up to the door, and largely they do a lot of the time. Um, it does make it difficult. Perhaps it needs to be more explicit as to what do we feel safe at home from a conversational point of view, hmm. psychological point of view. Yeah, can you imagine the old days? You were getting a dressing down. You don't really see that anymore, do you? Like a verbal dressing down, a telling off from your boss. Yeah, yeah. And your kids were in the next room. That'd be awful, yeah, that it? would be bad. Having to do that, yeah, over Zoom. There, yeah, or or, or I don't know. <sighs> Luckily, I haven't had to haven't had to be part of that. But um, that must be strange. Or even having to give bad news, and and we don't know at the moment. The economy is in a very funny place, but you can't help but thinking there's going to be a lot of people um, that where their jobs and their roles are potentially under threat. That's not news that you want to hear, is it? And that's probably certainly not news that you want your family to have to overhear. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So. Bit of a downer, Jeff. Bit of a downer. Yeah, but interesting. Interesting. So what can we take from it? So the... Um, I think this is... This is an important thing. We, I, we've touched on it before, but just this sense of checking, checking in with your teammates, checking in with the people that you're working with, making sure they're all right. Um, and... Having a little bit of, I saw someone, so I can't remember who it was now. In fact, I don't think I knew who it was. I think it was just a tweet that I noticed. 
um, saying that they had two meetings this week, which the agenda was not to talk about work. Mm. Um, and you didn't have to have the cameras on. It was just chill. Mm. And yeah, you know, speaking to a few people who are going from Zoom call to Zoom call without that sort of five minute walking down the corridor to get to the next meeting room type thing. Uh, that 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 burnout sent, you know. It's um I think just making sure that you can build a few of those things in. I mean, when we did that training course that we did, we made sure that we our sessions were shorter and our mm. were longer. Um and even even face to face, I encourage teams to not have their meetings run from o'clock to o'clock. Mm. Give yourself five minutes before the end of the hour because you know you need to get up gather your stuff move off move around or uh, how often does the things overrun just by a couple of minutes and if your next meeting starts exactly when the last meeting finishes you, you're just always going to be late so mm. even even in person i think that's that's a good habit but even more so when it's remote mm. And also, I think don't be afraid to pick up the phone. So you alluded, alluded to this earlier that you can still just have a phone conversation. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those awkward silences don't seem as awkward on the phone because you don't have the visual awkwardness of waiting to waiting for a gap when someone's mouth stops moving to, to say something. So, and uh, also, I think you know, good old fashioned um, mobile or even dare I say a fixed landline um, tends to be better audio connection anyway. And certainly in my house, <laughs> when I don't, where I don't have the greatest and most reliable uh, broadband speed. So, on a positive, um, mate, on a positive, yeah, the 22nd of June, so eight, eight days to the end of the month. The rumor is Fourth of July pubs open. Yeah. So less than two weeks, we could be <laughs> in a beer garden. And that's it. If if the weather and certainly the weather is looking more positive, certainly this week, I think it's going to be a it's going to be like thirty degrees, isn't it? In oh, the in the UK on crazy on Wednesday Thursday. So if only it was that was. You know, those temperatures will be around in a couple of weeks' time. But, yeah, certainly you hope we can actually uh, do one of these face-to-face. -face. We'll have to think about it quick because that will be really weird having to go back to how we used to record these things with with actual handheld devices. And, you know, that's weird. <laughs> I, can't, I can't compute that right now. Well, but uh... someone, on that thing, so, someone said to me, I... Every now and again, I tweet a few of my daily stand-up challenge cards out on Twitter and encourage people to, I think it's daily, daily, daily stand-up challenge Fridays is, is our usual hashtag. And one of them, um, in fact, I was looking at these the other day, uh, one of them was um, change the location. One of them was about changing the location of your stand-up, right? Yeah, there we go. It says run the, run the daily stand-up in a different location. And someone tweeted back saying, how do I do this? How can I do this on, you know, I'm trapped by Zoom or he didn't say trapped by Zoom, but how can I do this? And it doesn't take much creativity, but I said, well, for a start, you could do it on a different device or from a different, change the angle of the camera, change, um, go and stand outside and do it. Go and stand it, uh, go and do it while you're walking down to the shops going, yeah, you don't have to be, even have to be visual. You could just be audio. Yeah. And someone tweeted back saying, yeah, I might do tomorrow's stand-up from my kid's treehouse. Nice. So, you know, why don't you go and you know, sit up there in your kid's treehouse and, and do a stand-up, that type of thing. Yeah. It just takes a little bit of creativity to yeah. get out of your seat and do that. Type What's of the thing. craziest place people have uh, done their stand-ups, I wonder? Maybe we should ask people to. Well, I in the good old days, Jeff, in the good old days of um, mobile phones, um, when we used to have BT Meet Me, mm -hmm. the conference, the, the BT conferencing uh, service, 
you know, to dial in every day for our um is it nine o'clock you were there, you were never there you wouldn't know uh nine o'clock nine fifteen stand ups I quite regularly be on the train so trying to do a stand up on a tra- on a moving train with a with mobile signal dipping in and out especially when you go through the Ken- Kensham tunnels oh you can get you just you can write that one off yeah and we played daily stand-up tag on, on the phone and you'd never know who was coming next so to speak so, yeah. good morning <laughs> in joke there for your listeners <laughs> good listening peter we love you. <laughs> yeah see having a good old-fashioned and she you don't get that on zoom do you that's one thing they could add you should have an entrance music or an entrance yeah. slogan something that you can play like your ring walk yeah yeah why see come on zoom if you're out there if you're listening that could be a zoom feature having a like a wrestling walk-in music or a dark players walk-in music to how you enter the call that's that, what a brilliant idea <laughs> for us maybe i'm sure <laughs> quite a few people oh, get I'm, sure it. I'm sure there's an audience of two out there that would enjoy that me and you yeah Nigel would enjoy that. Nigel would like that. We used to have um, <laughs> games, didn't we? We used to say, trying to think of the most amusing name to to sign into the conference with. <laughs> and one of them was Elvis Presley. So if you said, Elvis Presley has joined the conference. And then it, obviously when you left, it would say, Elvis Presley has left the conference. Mm-hmm. That, that was quite fun um, at, the, at the time. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think you should be able to sign in with the, the, the closest thing you've got to that with Zoom, isn't it, is, is a rename function, but that's yeah. not, it gets a bit old after a while. But if it's, if someone said it for you, or if someone announced it for you, like Bruce, Bruce Michael Buffer sort of style, ladies and gentlemen, that type of thing, that would yeah. be good. I'd enjoy that. Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe you should tweet Zoom HQ. Yeah, suggest a feature. Integrate the old snap camera. There you go. Onto a winner already. You do? Can they do accents? Like, can it mask your voice? You can mask your voice, can't you? Yeah, you must be able to. I, I, I've only seen the, the camera filters, but I imagine you must be, able, must be able to do an audio filter. But again, yeah, we're, we, we should be on the. We should be Zoom product managers, Jeff, with this type of this type of gold dust. To the market research panel. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I want to know the most interesting places that people have joined their team's meeting from yes that's what that I... are safe enough to share in public clean clean enough to share in public safe schmafe <laughs> there must be some there must be someone who's conference or stand up stood up but not literally or maybe literally from the toilet someone must have done a stand up from a toilet yeah must have happened and they've done it in the bath Bit risky. <laughs> Don't want to drop your phone, do you? All right, mate. Right, I've got to go now. But you know why? Because mm-hmm. I've promised my children that we're going to watch the end of. We started watching the beginning. This was again part of um, Father's Day. Start. So, huh? It's a good place to start at the beginning. Yeah, um, we what we started watching Lord of the Rings this week. Crikey! So <laughs> it's getting that bad, right? Lockdown. Uh, so we started the Fellowship of the Ring yesterday. We didn't quite get to the end because it's a long film. Um, so the director's cut? No, it's not. It's, I don't think it is. It's just the, the regular, just the regular two and a half hour edition. Because I got the um, cut. Yeah. So um, we're going to watch the. They've got about half an hour left to watch before they go to bed. So no, I promised them that. All right. Farewell, Samwise. <laughs> Cheers, mate.